Welcome back to Electronic Structure and Bonding in Inorganic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tolkoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about two things. Number one, diamagnetism slash paramagnetism, and then we're going to introduce something called magnetic or molar susceptibility. Alright, so basically we have this concept of diamagnetism and paramagnetism that you heard about probably in general chemistry. All right. Diamagnetism is a state of a molecule or ion in which there are no unpaired electrons, meaning every electron is paired up with another one in, in the orbitals that occupy electrons. If something is paramagnetic or exhibits paramagnetism, it means there are unpaired electrons. One way we can look at those compounds is we can just look at structures. If we want to determine something. So let me draw this molecule right here. This is the technically correct structure of molecular oxygen. You've probably heard that oxygen is paramagnetic, and sure enough, we see there are two unpaired electrons right there. Okay, So um, oxygen is paramagnetic, and when we have paramagnetic compounds or ions, they tend to weigh more in a magnetic field. All right. Another concept is that there's a tendency when there's unpaired electrons the, the more unpaired electrons there are, the, the more they'll weigh in a magnetic field. Let's look at another example. So this one I'm going to draw a, a different compound. It's going to be similar. This molecule is termed superoxide. In this case, there's only one unpaired electron right there. All right. Again, since there's an unpaired electron, it's paramagnetic. Another example that might not be so obvious is nitric oxide. Okay, if you draw in all the electrons, you would see there's an, there's an unpaired electron on the nitrogen. Okay, it's an unpaired electron, so nitric oxide is also paramagnetic. Okay, and in, in fact, these two compounds over here, superoxide and nitric oxide, and even to some extent we consider oxygen, they're called radicals, and radicals by definition have unpaired electrons, so therefore they are paramagnetic. When we start getting into inorganic chemistry, though, we look at transition metals, and it's kind of hard to tell if something's going to have unpaired electrons or not. Okay, We can't just, you know, for something that is really large, we can't just draw 30 electrons really easily and, and figure out if, it's, if they're unpaired or paired. So we have to look at the d orbitals. Now, now, when you just had a free transition metal where all the orbitals were degenerate, the kind of thing you did in... Um, you know, general chemistry. I'm going to look at the D7 case. So 7D electrons. So let's just plug in 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so if it was just a free metal in a vacuum, a D7 metal in a vacuum away from ligands, then it would appear N is equal to 3 here. Okay, there's three unpaired electrons. All right, and by the way, when we're doing molar magnetic susceptibility, N is going to be the number of unpaired electrons. But as we know, when we're doing this kind of stuff, if we're not in a vacuum, we don't have these free transition metals. They're surrounded by a sphere of ligands. And that causes octahedral splitting if we assume that it's octahedral. So we're going to have splitting patterns, all right, where the E sub G orbitals come up here and the T2G are going to be down here. The same thing over here. Well, it turns out that hopefully what we know by now is depending on whether or not it's high spin or low spin for the same number of D electrons, we're going to actually have a different number of unpaired electrons. All right, so let's go ahead and fill in these according to whether they're high spin or low spin for the D7 case. All right, high spin, 1, 2, 3, and then we come up high, 4 and 5, and then 6 and 7. Okay, so here it appears N is also 3. But now let's do the low spin, and we'll probably see something different. 1, 2, 3, stay low, 4, 5, 6, and then we'll come up here, 7. So here N is 1. Well, it turns out that because there's a different number of unpaired electrons, well, first of all, there's unpaired electrons in both, so they're both paramagnetic. But for the same metal, when there's different numbers of unpaired electrons, this means the high spin state will weigh a different amount than the low spin will in a magnetic field. So what we can do, and we'll look at examples of this in future videos after this, but you can actually determine whether it's high spin or low spin by taking that compound and putting it in a magnetic field. And then you get a number that comes out of it. It's, it's actually called the molar susceptibility. And you can back calculate the number of unpaired electrons and determine which one it is. And we're actually going to look at an, an example of doing that specifically in a few videos. All right.
So how do you do it? Well, you take the compound, whatever it is, and you weigh it in something called a molar susceptibility balance. All right, an example of one is right here, and you'll probably do this in one of your inorganic labs. And the concept is just that whenever you put something in a magnetic field that's paramagnetic, it will weigh more than if it was diamagnetic. All right, there's an added weight in the magnetic field due to the paramagnetism, the unpaired electrons. Okay, so that's number one. Paramagnetic compounds weigh more in the magnetic field. But also, it also turns out that the more unpaired electrons you have, the heavier it becomes. All right, so if you had, if you had um, some compound, okay, it's octahedral, the same metal and the same six ligands around it, identical, except one's high spin and one's low spin. In a magnetic field, the high spin would appear to weigh more because there's more unpaired electrons in this case. The low spin has fewer unpaired, so it would appear to weigh less in the magnetic field. So what you're actually going to be doing in some labs, and actually we'll do this in, the, in one of the future videos, is we'll calculate something called the molar susceptibility. And then we'll use this to back calculate the number of unpaired electrons. And say, if we, did, say we did an experiment, right? We calculate the molar susceptibility, we measure that, and we back calculate the number of electrons that are unpaired, and it turns out this number turns out to be three. Well, in this particular experiment, then I could conclude that our compound is this one. It's the high spin case of that D7 metal. Okay, it's not the low spin, because if it were low spin, I would measure this X sub M, and I'd back calculate N, and it would be one. But it's not one, it's three, so it has to be the high spin. So hopefully that gives you an intuition on what we can do with everything. All right, so let's regroup here and just kind of come to a conclusion. Diamagnetic compounds have no unpaired electrons. Paramagnetic compounds have unpaired electrons, and they tend to weigh more in a magnetic field when you apply it. Okay, the other thing also, the more unpaired electrons there are, the heavier it will appear in a magnetic field. So if you have one, paired elect one unpaired electron versus two unpaired electrons, the two unpaired electron state will tend to weigh more in the magnetic field. And if there's three unpaired electrons, it'll tend to weigh more in a magnetic field than the two or the one case. Okay. And the application of this is you can actually use this information, this X sub M and the N that comes out of it, to determine whether your compound of your study is high spin or low spin, because generally all of those are going to have a different number of unpaired electrons. Okay, So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, and in the next few videos we're going to hopefully get some application of this. We're going to do some problems and do some calculations that you can see on your exam. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.